It ain't about the heavenly home. It ain't about the earthly home. It's about being with you. That you being among us. That we being free. That we might praise and worship you as freely as we can. Yes, we're bound in this world. We're bound with so much things and stuff. We're bound by materialism. We're bound by politicalism. We're bound by greed. We're bound by selfishness. We're bound by the heathen. Yes, your people are bound every which way we turn. We're bound. And then some of us are persecuted in this day and time. Yes, being homesick. Yes, yes, to be with you. It ain't about that heavenly home. If that's what it is, that's what it is. It ain't about this new heaven and new verse. That's what it is. That's what it is. But being with you, oh, just being with you in front of your presence, there is safety in your presence. There is deliverance in your presence. There is glory in your presence. There's safety in your presence. There's holiness. There's righteousness. And there is no want nor evil that shall come across us. Yes, I see that bright light shine. Thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy and your favor. Yes, we ask you to deal with our hearts and our minds that we might desire your presence. Above all things, your presence. Above all things, to praise you and give you the glory and just exalt you in all things that you might have eminence in our lives. Yes, to see you as our bright light. To see you above our mother, brother, sister, father, even that one TikTok. I say, oh, you're going to love God more than him? Yes. We love God more than all our families, even our own life. Yeah, that's a cult. Yeah, it's a cult. Yeah, because you with the majority. Oh, wide is the gate. Narrow. And wide is the road and many be thereon. But narrow is the way. And small that gate going to be. And few that be to even find it. Yes, and we thank you for all things that even this world, this days are numbered. Yes, 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 this is why you better start teaching your children and getting them started early in the scripture. It's not the fact of just telling them who to believe in, but tell them this is the book that I've, I've been in. You give them a reason why you believe. Don't tell them you got to believe this. Now, this is the flaw of many. See, children are going to know, why do my daddy, why do my mama believe in this? Baby, this is why I believe in this, okay? You have to show a whole reason of your own faith. Yes. Now, we're coming from the book of Jubilees. We left off at verse 36, and we're going to begin with verse 37. Yes, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Those of you on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook platforms, I'm T. Clay. And we want to thank God for all of you who have joined. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. We give God the glory because you are whom or who is the object of all the things that are put forth in this world. Your soul, your eternity, your joy, your peace. And I'm here and I'm just one that shows you how to have that peace, how to have that joy, how to have that long suffering. How to wait on God. Yes, even it's a daily reading that we do each day. And we thank God for you that have joined. We ask God that, that, that he bless you in your soul, in your spirit. That you might want his presence more and more even as you go about your day. Even as you go about your life. That whether in life or death or even in the face of death. That you trust in the most high with all your heart, mind and soul. And lean not to your own understanding. But fear not him who could kill the body, but fear him who can do both. Kill the body and cast thy soul into hell. There's no such thing as hell, but the fact is it means torment. Torment. There is a torment. In the book of Henoch, it talks about, of the book, it talks about torment. And let us go. We're going to try to expedite this real quick. We have over 100 verses or 100 chapters in this book. And it's a long one. And verse 37, and sometimes their eyes were open and sometimes blinded until another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back and their eyes were open. He's talking about the children of Jacob or Ekobi. Ekobi. See, the J wasn't there at that time. 
He's talking about the children of Kobe, their backslidings, and they're coming forth. The children of a Kobe are those who are represented by the sheep. Yes. And let us keep reading. He says, and brought them all back till their eyes were open. And the dogs and the foxes, these are the Gentiles. These are the people, the Arabs, the Europeans, the the, the Shemites, the Hamites, or however you want to present them or call them, they were not, even Shemites, their own brethren, they were not the children of Akobi, even Jacob, as some of you call them. He said, and the dogs and the fosters and the wild boars began to devour those sheep until the owner, we're going to call, we're going to name the father's spirits the owner, instead of using that L word, we're going to say owner. Okay. Of the sheep raised up another sheep and a ram in their midst. This was a leader which led them. Verse 39, and that ram began to butt on either side those dogs and foxes and wild boars until he had destroyed them all. That sheep whose eyes were open saw that ram which was amongst the sheep until it forsook its glory and began to butt those sheep and trampled upon him and behaved itself unseemingly. Oh, something happened here. Now, this might have been one of the kings of Israel, or however you would put it. Now, David did that before. Now, and uh, Solomon, uh, you could say sort of Solomon, maybe not Solomon. And, and the owner of the sheep sent the lamb of an, to another lamb and raised it, in, it to being a ram and a leader of the sheep instead of that ram which had forsaken its glory. Now it went to it and spake to it alone and raised it to being a ram and made it a prince and a leader of the sheep. But doing all these things, those dogs oppressed the sheep. In other words, the Philistines. We're talking about the Philistines when they came into the land of Canaan, the Philistines and all these things. See, Enoch had saw all these things before they even happened in the symbolic form. And the first ram, verse 43, pursued that second ram, and that second ram arose and fled before it. And I saw until those dogs pulled down the first ram. And that second ram rose and led the little sheep, and those sheep grew and multiplied, but all the dogs and foxes, foxes and wild boars fear. You have to realize these dogs, these are unclean people. It's representing the uncleanness of the Gentiles, the uncleanness of their mind and their heart. And these are also led by devils. They're led by Satans, not Satan. Satan is not singular, Satans. And feared and fled before that the ram butted and killed the wild beast and those wild beasts had no longer any power among the sheep and robbed them no more of aught. Oh, that's going to come to pass one day. Yes, yes, yes. When these dogs and these wild boars rob no more even that continent that God had given those even those to prosper, but yet they were dumbed down to the point that they did not prosper and was ran over for hundreds of years. Yes, God's going to give that back, but for only for a short season. Now, he said, now, had no longer any power among the sheep and robbed them no more. And that ram begot many sheep and fell asleep. And a little sheep became ram in its stead. And became prince and leader of those sheep, and that house became great and broad, and it was built for those sheep. You might be talking about Saul and David, I believe. Yes, it was built for those sheep, and a tower, lofty and great, was built on the house of the owner of the sheep. And that house was low, but the tower was elevated and lofty, and the owner of the sheep stood on the tower, and they offered a full table before him. Yes, I mean sacrifices. It sounds like Solomon. Okay. And again, I saw those sheep that they again erred and went many ways and forsook their house. And the owner of the sheep called from some amongst the sheep and sent them to the sheep. But the sheep began to slay them. These are the prophets. You can say the book of 
the prophets, the book you, judges or, or whatever of the prophets. Yes, these are the prophets regardless. And one of them was saved and, and was not slain and it sped away and cried aloud over the sheep and they sought to slay it. But the owner of the sheep saved it from the sheep and brought it up to me and caused it to dwell there. And many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and lament over them. And after that, I saw that when they forsook the house of the owner, and this is the temple, and his tower, they fell away entirely and their eyes were blinded. Yes, blindness has happened unto the children of Jacobi. Blindness has happened unto the children of Jacobi. He's going to give you a certain amount of time. That's it. Last call. In this time, this is called the last call to the children of Akobe. And you are met with all kind of opposition. Opposition from Japhites, Semites, Hamites. Yes, these that are not called or not chosen of the Most High. They see another way and they cannot see the way of the Most High. That's why you have to ignore them. Period. Even they're on different platforms, social platforms. Ignore them. But you better cleave to that word, that law, statutes and commandments of the Most High. You can't keep all of them. No, you can't keep all of them. It's not, it's impossible even to even sacrifice unto the Most High that your sins may be blotted out. But what does he say? It was not Esau that died for you that took away your sins. He said that if you, if the wicked, in the day that the wicked forsake his sins, they shall be remembered no more. You know what he told you was to do? Just stop. Stop worshiping idols. Stop committing adultery. At this time that you have a time of forgiveness and you have a time to really come back to the most high and you, you, the, the, the sacrifices are taken away in every way, shape, and form. The, they have met you with all kinds of things. In some countries, they can sacrifice. But really, the elect, this one you call Messiah, this one you call uh, uh, the Christ, this was an elect. This guy was even, this spirit was sent here to taste of man, to taste for man. And that way he's able to judge in the day of his appointment. He's already shown you that you can rise again, but he's judging you. God has given him that authority to judge. That's what he means by all authority he was given unto me in heaven and earth. To judge you. To judge spirits. Even the demons cried out, have you come to torment us before the time? This is all written in the book of Enoch. I don't have to show you anything. You go back into the eye crafts. Okay, I, I'm, let's go on a little bit further. And many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them. And lament over them. And after that I saw that when they forsook the house of the owner and his tower, they fell away entirely and their eyes were blinded. And I saw the owner of the sheep, how he wrought, it's the same person, this is the, the creator, how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds until those sheep invited that slaughter and betrayed his place. And he gave them over into the hands of lions and tigers. These are even more worse than the former. And wolves and hyenas into the hands of foxes. Now all these are on the continent. There's nothing over there in what they call Palestine. None of this stuff is over there. All this stuff is all in sub-Saharan Africa. These same wolves and hyenas and foxes. Yes. And he said, and I'm still in verse 52. And to all wild beasts and those wild beasts began to tear into pieces those sheep. Now, this is the time that you have really have dealt with all kind of Philistines and Canaanites and Hivites and Jebusites and all kind of sites. Yes. And you've been indoctrinated with all kind of Egyptology and all kind of myths. These things are so to trip you up to see how much will you cleave and believe on the word of the Most High and cause yourself to even ride with him and want him more than even your own life. Yes, this is what this was for. Now he said, and the lions to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. Verse 54. And I began to cry aloud with all my power and to plead appeal 
to the owner of the sheep and, my, and to represent him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts. You know, they're killing them all, your people. They're taking them away. Yes. In the Congo, where Belgian king have just torn up pieces. Yes, yes, yes. Even in South Africa, where they just took and tried every solitary way in the United States. Oh, hangings and all kind of things, ripping babies, gator bait and everything. Yes, they're ripping and devouring the sheep by all these wild beasts. And they call you savages. <laughs> but we remain unmoved, though he saw it and rejoiced that they were devoured. God saw this. This is what, the, this is what, this is what God had described, that you might be chastised, that you might call on his name. We stop calling on the name of the most high. You call yourself Indians and indigenous and all this other stuff. And then next thing you know, you find out that you're, you're just Jacob. Many of them. Yes, there are those who were Egyptians here. They were black in the United States. Yes, because that is an extension of Egypt. Because it was connected to that Egypt part. And then the other parts was connected to sub-Saharan Africa. It was all one land at one party. Even all the stuff in the north was all one land. And regardless of whether you believe it or not, that land was split and there were people on that land when it split. <laughs> now, this is what happened. He called 70 shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spake to the shepherds and their companions, let each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforth and everything that I shall command you to do that ye do that ye. And I will deliver them over unto you duly numbered and tell you which of them are to be destroyed and them destroy ye. And he gave over to them those sheep. In other words, these were the captivities, Babylon, Persia, Gratia. All of these, and he called another and spake unto him, Observe and mark everything that the shepherds will do to those sheep, for they will destroy more of them than I have commanded. In other words, you stuck, overstepped your bounds. God had given you jurisdiction over his own people through slavery, through all kind of things. He's given you that, that they might be chastised, and many of them are still stuck on stupidity. To believe the things that the heathen have put forth. Yes, Egyptians are heathens. Now, for they will destroy more of them than I have commanded them in every excess and the destructions which will be wrought through the shepherds. Record, namely, how many they destroy according to my command and how many according to their own caprice. Record against every individual shepherd of all destruction he effects. Yes, you have destroyed, you've killed, but what is that to God? Yes, the person who's suffering, who have, to have been killed, and those who have suffered the torments, God knows these things. He sees those things. But the destruction and the torment that shall come to those who have caused these things are much, much, much more, thousands times more worse than they can imagine. So they come up with a doctrine. Oh, God is a loving God. God's law, God is love. His law is love. His law is fair. For Lord's love is fair. If you look in all the Beatitudes in the writings of Paul, it talks about fairness. It hateth evil. Vaunted not itself. Look at it and compare it with the law. Fair is fair. You're trying to say, God, to be unfair, I killed so many people, and you need to forgive me, and I... I I might do it again, but that's just like an adulterer, fornicator, a liar. Stop. But those sins are not forgiven. Murder. Rape. Sodomy. All these things are not forgiven. You're just going to have to bear the brunt because God has even charged Israel to delete those people or those of the nation that would do such thing. And you can imagine if they do not do it, what's going to happen in the second judgment. Now, 
And I read out before me a number of how many of these destroyed, how many they delivered. Oh, we'll go back to 62. But they shall not know it. They don't know they've been. These, these, these European, these Greeks, these Romans, these Babylonians, these Egyptians and Gracians and all this, the things that they do to the people of the Most High. They don't know it. And thou shalt not declare it to them, nor admonish them, but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect in this time. This is representative rulers. And lay it to all, lay it all before me. In other words, God see it. Haven't you seen under the altar where they say, when you're going to divide the, our blood that was shed? He said, rest a while. Just, just sit there wet. Rest. Take it easy. See, you got those that's going to be killed after you. you, you, you be, 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 they're, going, they're going to be deleted and they're going to be tormented and stuff. No, this is not easy. It's not easy at all. It's very hard to have guns and bombs and, and people just jealous of you for no reason at all. It's not easy. These are spirits. Now, and they were bidden that they delivered those sheep into the hands of lions. That was verse 63. And the lions and tigers eat and devour the greater part of those sheep. In other words, thousands. They deleted millions, millions, millions on the continent of Africa and United States and South America and Europe. Yes, they deleted millions. Yeah, they were turned over into the hands. We were turned over to their hands. But he's telling the whole story here and what's going to happen. And I became exceedingly sorrowful in verse 65 over that tower because that the house of the sheep was demolished. He's talking about the temple. And afterwards, I was unable to see if the sheep entered that house. 66. And the shepherds and the associates delivered over those sheep all the wild beasts to devour them. Each one of them received in his time a definite number. And it was written by the other in a book how many, each one of them, destroyed them. Yes, they destroyed many of us. And each one slew and destroyed many more that was prescribed. And I began to weep and lament on the account of those sheep. Yes, you overstepped your bounds. Ex-slavers, children of slavers. You overstepped your bounds of those who robbed the continent of its resources and everything. You overstepped your bounds. It's your time now. You thought it was our time. Your time is now. And thus in the vision... I saw that one who wrote how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day and carried up and laid down and showed actually the whole book of the owner of the sheep. Even everything that he had done and all that each one of them had made away. This is symbolically talking now. I'm walking this thing. Come on here. With all that they had given over to destruction. And the book was read before. The owner of the sheep, the owner of the sheep is Dr. Anzambi, yes, the creator, the I am that I am. And he took the book from his hands and read it and sealed it. This was the sealed book. When that book is open, this is the sealed book in the book of Revelation. They have marred over it and everything. That book is sealed. That book was sealed. I don't care how you look at it. These people in the New and Old Testament, this was the reference that they used in a lot of their prophecies. This is a reference to their prophecy, even the book of Enoch. Now, it's sealed until that one lamb, that elect one, came and opened it. Now judgment is come. Now, forthwith, how, forthwith I, I saw how the shepherds pastor. The four twelve hours, and behold, three of those sheep turned back and came and entered to begin to build up all that had fallen down of that house. But the wild boars tried to hinder them, but they were not able. Might be talking about Zerubbabel. Okay. Might be talking about Zerubbabel. And they began again to build as before, and they reared up that tower, and it was named the High Tower. And they began to place a table before the tower, but all the bread on it was polluted and not by pure as touching. All this, the eyes of those sheep were blinded so that they were, again, blinded. Look at you, Israel, blinded. 
You're just coming out of a twilight. You're just waking up with matter in your eyes and you can't see. You're trying to see, but you can't see. And everybody's putting images in front of your face and your eyes trying to tell you this way. Egyptology, crystals, and all manner of idol worship and all these things. Yes, they're doing all kind of crazy things to your mind and trying to tell you this is the way and that is the way. There is no other way but then the law. The law is love. God is love. Do you not understand what he's saying here? Shepherds for destructions, and they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. And the owner of the sheep remained unmoved until all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with the beast. And the shepherds did not save them out of the hand of the beast. No, they didn't save them. Remember the time of when King Cyrus, the book of Esther, there was a man named Haman. He just... He wanted to kill him. God got a hold of him. Now, see, you're going to have to read the, the New Testament. What happened after the law was given? See, that law is where hangs all the torment, all the lies. And that law is where they come after that. When you walked out of that law, you walked into hell on earth. And this is one who wrote the book, carried it up, and showed it, and read in verse 74, it before the owner of sheep and employed him on their, their account and besought him and sought him on their account as he showed them, showed him all the doings of the shepherds and gave testimony before him against all the shepherds. And he took the actual book and laid it down beside him and departed. That book was sealed. That's the book of judgments that's going to come forth. Book of judgments, judgments, judgments. That's what, is, that's what happens in Revelation. See, he knows what he's talking about here. Judgments, judgments, and it won't be long. I don't know the day nor the hour, but these judgments are setting up. You can predict, you can listen to these heathen and these so-called think they know it, everything, but you, God, what did, what, did, what did the elect one say? He said, watch. He didn't say predict. He said, watch. He didn't say try to figure it out, but watch. And as you study his word and his word is in you and you are in his word, it's going to come to you and show you what is getting ready to happen. See, they're putting a smoke screen before you, so you'll watch for the wrong thing. But you watch, and the spirit of the Most High will reveal to you what is happening as it happens. <laughs> for right now, you must build yourself up in the most holy confidence in the most holy because there's going to come a time of hell on earth. And it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's setting up. Oh, that thing with, that, with the converts and all, that's just, that's just smoke. That's just a bunch of smoke. But where is this thing going to happen? You, Africa, you better prepare. That's what I'm saying. You better prepare. You've given a space. You're giving a space. It's going to be a good space according to man's time, yes. But it's a short space in God's time. You're giving a space to prepare your soul, your heart. You're giving a space. And that space is going to be very nice. And some of you are not just, you're, going to, you're not going to understand it and you're just going to fall away. But anyway, that was verse 89 we've just finished of the book of Enoch. And with all that, we hope that you find peace, joy, and the most high above all things, his presence. And with that, I'm going to say peace.